Welcome. I'm Susan Jones, Chair of the Board of Trustees of the Indiana Historical Society. The board and staff of the IHS are happy you have joined us for the 2020 Founders Day celebration. This has been an historic year, and as it draws to a close, we have an opportunity to reflect and give thanks for all of the blessings we have, despite going through one of the most difficult years in a century. Our history proves that in times like these, we have reason to be hopeful. 100 years ago in 1920, Indiana and the United States faced similar issues, a pandemic, a contentious election, a fight for equality and civil rights with women's suffrage, and a struggle to define our role in the world. Out of this time, we built one of the longest and strongest periods in our history, one that is often referred to as the American century. History shows that when faced with struggles like these, we pull together to build something better, fairer, and more productive than ever. So here we are at a point of choice and change, to guide and inspire us, we can look to our history, which can be found here at places like the IHS and the hundreds of local historical organizations throughout the state. Thank you for joining us tonight in honoring the people and organizations who toil in the fields of history to create resources that benefit our state and its many communities. Please join me in welcoming Jody Blankenship, President and CEO of the Indiana Historical Society. Jody? Thank you, Susan. This is my second Founders Day celebration since joining the IHS, and I'm constantly amazed by the incredible dedication and work that happens across Indiana by local historical societies and individuals, from Evansville to Fort Wayne, and from Richmond to Gary. Hoosiers have a wonderful appreciation and respect for their history, and for good reason. Our history is filled with the stories of struggle, joy, achievement, and community. For centuries, we've relied on one another to pull through extraordinary challenges in order to build strong communities where we raise our families, create businesses and organizations that serve each other, and educate our children and imbue them with Midwestern values. My wife and I are proud to call ourselves Hoosiers, and my friends and family in other states are tired of hearing about how wonderful it is to live here. This December marks the Indiana Historical Society's 190th anniversary. Since 1830, we have been the official steward of Indiana's collective history. I'm humbled to lead such an august and important organization, and I'm grateful to work with wonderful colleagues at the IHS and throughout the state. Together, we provide an invaluable resource to our communities and fellow Hoosiers. To tonight's honorees, I hope you know how valuable and appreciated your work truly is. The Indiana Historical Society, unlike many other state historical societies, is a private organization. It is not supported with tax dollars. Rather, the IHS's work is funded through the generosity of individual members and donors. None of this is possible without you. We're also supported by companies like Hurdle Callahan, the sponsor of this year's Founders Day Awards Program, who invest in the importance of our mission and work. I'd like to turn the floor over to John Hurdle, Executive Chairman of Hurdle Callahan and Company, to share some brief remarks. John? Hello, I'm John Hurdle, the Executive Chairman of Hurdle Callahan. For the past 14 years, we have had the privilege of serving as the Indiana Historical Society's own independent investment office. And all of us at Hurdle Callahan are proud to sponsor the Founders Day Awards. When people ask me personally why I care so much about history, I start by saying that history is not about dates and places. It's about the people who made those dates and places matter. All of history then is a human interest story. Who were those people really? What memorable decisions did they make? What judgments led to those decisions and what future did they create? At Hurdle Callahan, we are in the decision-making business, and we know that judgment is nothing more and nothing less than the sum total of our life experience. But by knowing our forefathers and what they went through, we can incorporate their life experience into our own, enhance our judgment, make better decisions, and lead better lives. So thank you for shining your light on the people who have made Indiana's stories unique and congratulations to all of this year's Founders Day Award recipients. 
Each year, the Founders Day Awards recognizes outstanding individuals and organizations whose efforts have enriched the lives of others by conveying awareness and appreciation of Indiana's history on local, regional, and statewide levels. I want to thank Kay Fetters, the IHS staff member who has organized the annual celebration, and Amy Lamb for creating this virtual event. And thank you to Bill Bartell, an IHS trustee and chair of our awards committee, as well as the members of the awards committee itself, who have the difficult task of reviewing the award nominations, some of whom are serving as our presenters this evening. If you are not a member of the IHS, I encourage you to join and help us to collect, preserve, and share our history with generations of Hoosiers. Thank you all for joining us to celebrate tonight's honorees. Let's get this evening started with a presentation of our first award. The Jacob Pye Dunn Jr. Award is named after the Indiana historian and author and is given annually to the writer of the best article in Traces of Indiana and Midwestern History, published by the Indiana Historical Society Press. Judging criteria includes writing quality, suitability of the subject matter, thoroughness and originality of the research, and the contribution made to Indiana history or culture. Anita Morgan, a senior lecturer in history at Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis, is the winner of the 2020 Dunn Award. Her article, Working Together, There Is Nothing We Cannot Accomplish, Indiana Women Win the Vote, appeared in the winter 2020 issue and examined how Hoosier women finally captured the right to vote in 1920 and their experiences casting their first ballots. Anita is the author of the IHS Press book, We Must Be Fearless, The Women's Suffrage Movement in Indiana. A native Hoosier and former president of the Indiana Association of Historians, she received her undergraduate degree and doctorate in history from Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. Congratulations, Anita. The Caleb Mills Indiana History Teacher of the Year Award, named in honor of Caleb Mills, the father of Indiana's common schools, is made annually to an educator currently teaching American or Indiana history in grades four through 12, and recognized by his or her colleagues as making a significant contribution to the understanding of these two fields by his or her students. This year, we have two winners in this category. Our first honoree is Kristen Rentschler, an educator for the past 21 years, who is currently a teacher at Columbia City High School. Since 2012, Kristen has been actively and enthusiastically involved with National History Day in Indiana. Each year, she helps 170 students engage in historical research and writing around the topics of their choice. Kristen actively encourages her students to examine the history of their county by drawing connections between what happens in Whitley County and the state, national, and even international narrative. She also brings local historians and college professors to meet her students to help them develop their project ideas and discuss their research. Through the Normandy Institute of National History Day, Kristen and one of her students were able to bring a World War II Hoosier soldier's story back to his family by researching his life and death in the invasion of Normandy. And they also shared a eulogy at his grave in the American Cemetery in Normandy. Earlier this year, she was named the Hannah E. Liz McGregor Senior Division Teacher of the Year Award winner by the National History Day Organization. Congratulations, Kristen. Our second honoree is Mariah Pohl. Mariah is an educator at Barker Middle School in Michigan City. Over the years, Mariah has been awarded 12 teacher fellowships, which led her to spend time in places in the U.S. as well as overseas in countries such as Germany, Egypt, Greece, Morocco, Spain, Japan, and Korea. Through a variety of online resources she developed about the Korean War and modern Korea, she is able to provide a rich background about the history and culture of Korea. Her students participated in a project conducting interviews with Korean War veterans from her local community. This created a first-hand awareness of the Korean War for her students and instilled a strong sense of pride for these veterans. Mariah actively shares her enthusiasm for seeing other parts of the world with her students. 
She has received grant funds to purchase class set virtual reality kits to integrate STEM in the social studies classroom and to have students witness and analyze history, culture, and geography from other areas of the world. Last year, Mariah was awarded the 2019 Indiana History Teacher of the Year by the Gilder Lehrman Institute of American History. Congratulations, Mariah. The Dorothy Riker Hoosier Historian Award is named for Dorothy Riker, who was a 50-year employee and editor for the Indiana Historical Society and the Indiana Historical Bureau from 1929 to 1979. The award is made annually to a historian who has made distinguished contributions to the field of historical scholarship, including presentation, use of materials, and preservation, or the affairs and activities of the Indiana Historical Society. This year, we recognize two honorees in the award category. Our first honoree is Anita Morgan of Indianapolis, a senior lecturer of history at IUPUI who is highly regarded by her students. She's the author of numerous articles about Indiana women's history, including many to mark this year's 100th anniversary of the suffrage movement and women's attaining the right to vote. One of Anita's many supporters has identified her as someone who has carried the torch of Indiana suffrage history, and many have said no individual historian has done more to document and teach the story of the suffrage movement in Indiana. She is the author of We Must Be Fearless, The Women's Suffrage Movement in Indiana, which was published by the IHS Press this year. Thanks to Anita's research, we know the many ways in which the Indiana suffrage movement differed from the national narrative. She shares her research and passion of the topic and has actively partnered with a number of organizations to celebrate this year's commemoration. Her book served as a guide for the development of the successful Suffrage Centennial Block Party, a week-long virtual program commemorating the suffrage movement in Indiana. She is a true Hoosier historian who has worked behind the scenes leading efforts for various conferences, task force, and committees. All of her supporters have expressed high praise for her considerable contributions to the field of history. Congratulations, Anita. Our second honoree is Paul R. Mullins of Indianapolis. For the past several years, Paul has been identified as one of the premier scholars of Indianapolis history. He is a professor in the Department of Anthropology at IUPUI. He is also past president for the Society of Historical Archaeology and the Charles R. Bantz Chancellor's Fellow and a Fulbright Scholar at the University of Aulu in Finland. Paul's work has been disseminated through both scholarly publications and through public venues. His historical research shows the number of ways that policy interventions have shaped the way the city has been formed today. He has led urban archaeology projects focusing on areas on and adjacent to the IUPUI campus. In the process, he has also engaged local residents and students in the importance and mission of documenting the history of the African American community that once occupied the area where the university now sits. Paul also maintains a blog that outlines the background history to contemporary and controversial topics. One example is his blog post titled, Memory Making and Civility, Removing the Garfield Park Confederate Monument. As one of his supporters noted, Dr. Mullins is a perfect example of a public historian whose work helps us better understand the present by illustrating for us how we got here. Congratulations, Paul. The Hubert Hawkins History Award is named for Hubert Howard Hawkins, the past secretary of IHS and the director of the Indiana Historical Bureau. Mr. Hawkins was instrumental in increasing IHS membership during his work around the state and with the Indiana Junior Historical Society. This award is given to a local historian for his or her distinguished service and career in local history. We honor two award winners in this category tonight. Libby Sersniak of Indianapolis is a regular feature writer for the website historicindianapolis.com under the column Indianapolis Collected. She is a longtime collector of Indianapolis-related antiques and ephemera. In her articles, she examines how ordinary items such as a letter, matchbox, or a particular quilt are connected to actual events that took place in Indianapolis. Her goal is to illustrate the importance of how everyday objects have their place in history and how this complements traditional research such as the history and preservation of architecture. Over the course of five years, she has researched and written more than 80 articles. 
Libby also began writing about events from Indianapolis's history that have mirrored current events in a different feature column titled Deja Vu. Recently, she has started her own blog, Indiepolitan, which examines how events of the 1960s, 70s, and 80s shaped Indianapolis in areas of urban renewal, desegregation, and suburban flight. As one of her supporters noted, Libby is an example of someone whose avocation is to communicate her love for local history to countless others through digital platforms, bringing history to an entire new generation of Hoosiers. Congratulations, Libby. Our second honoree, Barbara Brown Meyer Young, wears many hats, including researcher, historian, journalist, photographer, and an all-around kind and caring lady from Boonville. Her historical research primarily focuses on the history of Warwick County and spans six decades of work. She continues to amaze people in her hometown with the volume of material she writes and shares with her community. Barbara is the author of four books about people who are from Warwick County, and she has thousands of followers on her Facebook group, Once Upon a Time in Warwick County. In addition to sharing history through written work, she has served on a number of committees to organize various centennial and bicentennial celebrations for Warwick County and the town of Boonville. At 84 years young, Barbara continues to share knowledge of history by teaching a class in creative writing and serves as a mentor and inspirational speaker to high school students in Boonville. Barbara has been described as a guardian of local history and her supporters do not know of anyone else who has done what she has to document the history of their county. Congratulations, Barbara. The Willard C. Heiss Family History and Genealogy Award is named for Willard C. Heiss, a preeminent authority on Indiana Quaker history and genealogy and a fellow of the American Society of Genealogists. Mr. Heiss was administrator of the Records and Microfilm Division of the City of Indianapolis for 25 years and is credited with bringing order out of chaos to the city's archives. He served as chairman of the Family History Section of the Indiana Historical Society and was editor of its genealogy publications. This award is given to a family historian for his or her distinguished service and career in Indiana family history, helping genealogists discover connections between themselves and their ancestors through historical source material, family records, and well-documented stories. For more than 50 years, journalist and genealogist Dixie Klein Richardson of Ellettsville has been conducting local history and genealogical research. She is the author of Baynard Rush Hall, His Story, the only biography of IU's founding professor. Since the 1960s, she has written more than 250 articles, including some that were published in the Indianapolis Star, and has never stopped writing and sharing original regional material about Owen, Green, Monroe, Sullivan, and Clay Counties. Dixie is the founder of the Owen County Library's vast collection of genealogy and local history and has transcribed important records such as a journal of a Mexican-American war soldier and conducted several large indexing projects including a history of Owen County and the compiled affidavits of Owen County Revolutionary War pensioners. Dixie has also served as a consultant for family researchers, libraries, historical societies, public historians, and community agencies. In 1983, she was the only individual in Indiana to receive commendation for 20 years dedicated to the preservation and promotion of county history by the American Association of State and Local History. As an avid collector and history enthusiast, she recognizes the importance of preserving history and as a result has donated books, photographs, and other historical documents to organizations across the United States. Congratulations, Dixie. The Indiana History Outstanding Organization Event or Project Award recognizes an organization for an exceptional educational event or history project implemented during the past year, either one time or ongoing, which relates to that organization's mission. This year, we recognize four outstanding projects in this category. Our first outstanding project is the Vietnam Veterans Day Memorial and Commemorative Event organized by the Caroline Scott Harrison Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. 
As part of the chapter's 125th anniversary year, this group held an exceptional event on March 29, 2019 on Vietnam Veterans Day. When the Caroline Scott Harrison chapter learned of a special memorial program available through the Indiana War Memorial Commission to honor United States veterans, members made it their mission to raise over $5,000 to purchase personalized bricks. These bricks of honor recognize the 50 service members and one civilian who are listed as missing in action from the Vietnam War and are now installed at the foot of the Soldiers and Sailors Monument in the heart of downtown Indianapolis. In addition, the group planned and coordinated a large public dedication to honor these Indiana heroes. The event drew families of the Vietnam War MIAs, local area DAR, VFW, and American Legion members, as well as several government and military representatives and several hundred Hoosiers. Following the program, the Caroline Scott Harrison Chapter sponsored and hosted a luncheon for over 100 participants and guests to honor Indiana's Vietnam War MIAs. This is a unique public memorial, and according to the U.S. Department POW MIA Accounting Agency in Washington, this is the only public memorial listing individual Vietnam War MIAs in the United States. Congratulations to the Caroline Scott Harrison Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Our second outstanding project is EVA A7063, a documentary, and the accompanying EVA experience created by Ted Green Films and WFYI Public Media. EVA A7063 is an award-winning documentary about Eva Moses Kaur, a Holocaust survivor from Terre Haute. The documentary was the result of two years of intensive research, worldwide filming and interviews. To date, it has been aired more than 1,000 times by PBS stations across the United States and Germany. This collaborative project began nearly four years ago with Ted Green, who gathered a vast collection of material that documented Eva Kaur's life. In addition to creating the powerful documentary, Ted and WFYI also worked to create an impactful educational experience, including lesson plans, free toolkits for students, supplemental videos, and a virtual reality experience with Eva Kaur describing her experiences at Auschwitz. The extensive educational program later developed into a larger educational offering known as the Eva Experience. On January 27, 2020, and on the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, Governor Holcomb proclaimed the day EVA Education Day in Indiana. More than 1,000 schools in Indiana have received the EVA Educational Toolkit, which includes a shortened version of the film and additional educational material. Although Eva Kaur passed away in 2019, her legacy continues, and these projects continue to convey her messages of forgiveness, inclusiveness, and empathy. Congratulations, Ted Green Films and WFYI Public Media. Tonight, we also recognize the outstanding documentary, Reverend Marvin Chandler, Open to the Moment, created by GoDatus Production. GoDatus Production is a Bloomington-based production company led by David GoDatus, Larry Laswell, and Alan Backler. The group has made numerous films addressing important aspects of Indiana history. The group's mission is to record and preserve the stories of Indiana's people and historical events, drawing special attention to the importance of Indiana citizens, learning about all aspects of the state's history, including the legacy and contributions of African-American Hoosiers. Reverend Marvin Chandler, Open to the Moment, is a one-hour documentary describing the life of an outstanding African-American minister, musician, and leader. It is a compelling story of a Hoosier who has demonstrated his love of music from an early age and was inducted into the Indianapolis Jazz Foundation Hall of Fame in 2003. Reverend Chandler also served as a negotiator during the riots in Rochester in 1964 and at Attica Prison in New York in 1971. The documentary premiered at the Buzzkirk Chumley Theater in Bloomington on February 3, 2019, and has been seen on other public television stations in Indiana. Congratulations, GoDatas Production. Finally, we honor the Indiana Council for the Social Studies for its 2019 annual conference, How Hoosiers Exemplify Our World, Activists and Innovators and Diplomats. 
Based in Bloomington, the Indiana Council for the Social Studies is a premier organization in the state for social studies, education, resources, and support, promoting these through academics and scholarship. The 2019 conference ignited an enthusiasm for Hoosier educators to learn about Indiana history, as well as provided quality history and social studies professional development to educators around the state. The conference was attended by more than 100 Hoosier educators and by extension thousands of Hoosier students. The ICSS conference is a high quality event that takes more than a year of planning and collaboration with historical institutions across the nation, including the Indiana Historical Society. Speakers included Alelia Bundles, great-great-granddaughter of Madam C.J. Walker, who encouraged people to learn about local history and spoke about how the Bundles family played a significant role in Indiana history, politics, and culture. One of the nomination supporters noted that she has benefited greatly from attending the conference each year. Congratulations, Indiana Council for the Social Studies. The Outstanding Collaborative Project Award recognizes an exceptional project by a historical or heritage organization with one or more partners implemented during the past year, particularly for projects that share county or regional history. We recognize three outstanding collaborative projects this year. Our first recognized project is the Thorntown Colored Cemetery Restoration and Preservation Project, spearheaded by Rees H. Thompson. This nearly forgotten cemetery, located in Boone County, just west of Thorntown, dates back to the mid-19th century, shortly after the end of the Civil War. Reese worked with numerous groups to complete extensive research and determine boundaries, as well as to raise nearly $20,000 to help with restoration efforts. Additional tasks included cleaning up brush that had collected over the years, restoring headstones, and purchasing and installing a beautiful wrought iron fence to protect the space. He also completed a lengthy application for a state historical marker. Although 27 names had been listed in the burial, surveyors and historians were able to determine through ground radar detection that there are as many as 49 people buried in the cemetery. Reese was also able to locate a descendant of a woman buried in the cemetery who he invited as a guest of honor for the beautiful and moving ceremony he coordinated. As one of his supporters noted, it celebrated the past and brought hope for the future that all could be treated with dignity and respect. Congratulations, Reese. Our second recognized project is the Montgomery County Courthouse Clock Tower Restoration, organized by the County Courthouse Clock Tower Restoration Committee and the Montgomery County Historical Society. Located in Crawfordsville, the clock tower of the Montgomery County Courthouse was completed in 1876 and is the only remaining example in the United States of the neo greek architectural style developed in Paris in the 1840s. Almost 25 years ago, the Montgomery County Historical Society approached local citizens to assist with this project, and the community recognized and championed its historical value. In 1996, the restoration project began and was spearheaded by Dr. James Marion Kirtley, who as a young boy remembered the sound of the clock bell, and Sandy Laughlin Brown. They organized a committee to raise funds and spent several years writing grants and hosting fundraising events. Despite some challenging years, the community continued to rally together to see the project through. Once the funds were raised, architects and builders began the restoration process. 23 years after the project began, the repaired clock tower was raised to position on May 17, 2018, and the final restoration was completed in 2019. Although Dr. Kirtley passed away in 2000 before the project was completed, the community honored him by renaming the clock tower the Kirtley Clock Tower. Congratulations to the Courthouse Clock Tower Restoration Committee and the Montgomery County Historical Society. Our final honoree in this category is the Wonder Five Centennial Celebration. The Wonder Five is the name given to the group of five basketball players from Franklin who together won three consecutive state high school championships and two straight national championships at the collegiate level. Marking 2020 as the centennial year of the team's first championship, 
Franklin College and the Johnson County Museum of History jointly planned an event to celebrate this anniversary. The project began with a marker application approved by the Indiana Historical Bureau, which deemed the group as having statewide significance. In addition, the project included students at Franklin College getting the chance to take a project-based course in public history. Students were given instruction by both a trained academic historian and a public historian, which resulted in an incredible learning opportunity for the students. The project included working with community partners to develop an exhibit, as well as the historical market dedication celebration. Local supporters of the project are pleased to see this history come to life for local residents and visitors. Once the exhibit opened, the descendants of the Wonder Five felt a renewed connection to the story and the community. As one supporter noted, the Wonder Five holds a special place in our community's history, and now it can be celebrated and remembered for years to come. Congratulations to Franklin College and the Johnson County Museum of History. The Outstanding Collaborative Project Award is presented to a local or county historical society, organization, or site in Indiana, which has demonstrated remarkable service to and programs for its community. Honorees demonstrate excellent application of professional standards and best practices, particularly for organizations that demonstrate organizational transformation. The Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library, based in Indianapolis, conducted a campaign that raised $1.5 million in 75 days from 1,400 donors in order to purchase its building at 543 Indiana Avenue. Unfortunately, this year's COVID-19 pandemic has prevented the museum from opening as planned. Despite this, the Vonnegut Library carries out its mission of celebrating and championing the legacy of local author Kurt Vonnegut. The library celebrates storytelling by hosting programs to its diverse audience, including general readers, students, teachers, veterans, prisoners, and many more. The Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library also successfully advocates for free speech and common decency, even in the virtual environment, as evidenced by its Banned Books Week programming, which focused on historic and current challenges to free speech in the public forum and other places. Other programs include panel discussions of Vonnegut's influence and relationships with other writers. It also holds a collection of Vonnegut-related items, such as his original typewriter and reading glasses. Congratulations to the Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library. The Eli Lilly Lifetime Achievement Award is named for philanthropist Eli Lilly, a lifelong leader of the Indiana Historical Society. This award is given to an individual who, like Eli Lilly, has made extraordinary contributions to the field of history and or the mission of the Indiana Historical Society. Connie Weinsapfel is a well-known and beloved community leader to the people of New Harmony and far beyond. For 20 years, Connie was the director of Historic New Harmony. Prior to that, she served as director of the New Harmony Gallery of Contemporary Art. She's made significant contributions to the awareness and appreciation of New Harmony's history and its unique place in the history of the Southwest region of Indiana and really of our nation. Connie has worked tirelessly with various government and local agencies. Her work with Indiana Landmarks led to the development of a national register district that encompassed nearly the entire town of New Harmony. She later worked with the Indiana State Preservation Archaeology Division to further expand that historical district. She helped develop a collaborative contractual operating agreement between the University of Southern Indiana and the Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites. She advocated for making New Harmony a center for local and regional art and enhanced the area's stature as a destination for heritage tourists. She has worked with the National Park Service to research and develop a panel discussion exploring the role of the Owen family in establishing the Smithsonian. Connie also co-chaired New Harmony's 2014 Bicentennial, a long celebration that included many constituencies and legacy projects. Although now retired, Connie continues to mentor the staff and board members of Historic New Harmony, 
as well as university and high school students, faculty and regional organizations, and anyone who is concerned with historic preservation and development. Her numerous supporters praise her leadership and commitment to advancing and preserving the rich heritage of New Harmony. They unanimously agree that she has been a valued colleague, an effective collaborator, and a strong leader for New Harmony. Congratulations, Connie. Congratulations to all of this year's honorees. It's our Founders Day tradition to end the celebration with comments from someone who has made an indelible mark on Indiana history. This year, it is my honor to invite Dr. James Madison to provide the closing remarks. Most of you watching this event will know Jim, but just in case you don't, Dr. Madison is the Thomas and Catherine Miller Professor of History Emeritus at Indiana University Bloomington. He's written many books, including his most recent, the Ku Klux Klan in the Heartland. Jim has served more than 18 years as an IHS trustee, and this year marks the end of his final term. During his many decades career, Jim has served all Hoosiers as this state's foremost historian. Jim, your dedication to Indiana history and the optimism and insight you share through your work is admirable and invaluable. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. It's an honor to close out this wonderful evening. I need not tell you that we are living in changing times, even chaotic times. We tend to think sometimes that we're the first generation ever to face such radical and unsettling changes all around us. One Hoosier thought so. He wrote that we're living through an overturning thorough enough to bear the aspect of a revolution. And he added, we're living through the swiftest, moving, and most restless time the world has ever known. Those words of anxiety were written by our great Hoosier novelist, Booth Tarkington, in 1928. We could look at other times of great change. The fall of Fort Sumter in 1861, the pandemic of 1918, the landslide victory of the Ku Klux Klan in Indiana in 1924, the Great Depression of the 1930s. Times are always changing. The question is, what can we do about it? I think our past offers us lights to go forward, not to become more comfortable with our present, and certainly not to become more comfortable with our past, but to understand our past in order to think hard and critically about who we were and the future we want for ourselves. To know those who came before us, those who look to their future with wisdom and often with hope. I like, for example, those 43 men who gathered in Cardin, Indiana to write our 1816 state constitution, the best words I think ever written on the soil of Indiana. Or our Civil War governor, Oliver P. Morton, our greatest governor. Our great philanthropists such as Eli Lilly. But not just our great men. We've learned in our time about women of greatness. This year especially, those women who led the movement for suffrage, for the vote. We've learned about African-American women, not just Madam Walker, but all sorts of African-American women and men, lawyers, ministers, church women, who pushed against the barriers of segregation and discrimination in their communities across Indiana. In our generation, we have shifted the lens of history to include all Hoosiers. It's a great achievement. It's our legacy, I think, to the next generation. All this would not have happened without the immense contributions of historical societies, museums, libraries, and other institutions across our 92 counties. The award recipients tonight are representatives of that great force for a fuller history, a more honest history. They include staff members of commitment and talent. They include volunteers of dedication and immense hard work. They are Hoosiers rooted in their communities. Hoosiers who know not only the joy of history, but the importance of knowing who we were, where we are, and where we might want to go. In these changing times, these good Hoosiers, past and present, offer us lights to shine the way. Thank you.